This property, which was known as the Cherry Farm in Thornbury Township, Delaware County, it was one of the last remaining large parcels of property in the township. The site is in the headwaters of the west branch of the Chester Creek with Route 202 to the west, the agricultural fields to the south, and the golf course to the north. The township zoning for this property would allow 458 residential units. What we ended up with were 241 units. If we had developed the property according to existing ordinances, a lot of the trees would have been removed. Uh, you would have had development much more spread out. Instead of being clustered in the rear and in sections where we were respective of the tree masses, you would have had development in the front field. And that's exactly where I was truthfully heading at one point until I realized that this was a situation where there are people on the other side that I was working with who were looking for a win-win situation. And as soon as I realized that, there was a whole new game, because then I realized something really good could come out of this. Okay. And all of the areas that are delineated as wetlands, so right up here. We wanted it to be a cluster development because there were some features that we wanted to preserve. We didn't want to encroach on. We were really interested in the site from a conservation point of view. We knew it was in the headwaters of the, of the west branch of the Chester Creek. And there are, there are several fingers of, of creeks and streams feeding into that branch that uh, sort of thread throughout the site. And many of those fingers were covered with woodlands or wetlands. And we felt that one of the most critical approaches would be to preserve the riparian buffers along those streams and creeks. Uh, and along around the wetlands and uh, to preserve the wooded steep slopes that were bordering those streams. The first thing I do is uh, gather as much base information as you can, topography, woodlands, wetlands, you know, things that you naturally want to try to protect. I always walk the site. It's one of the first lessons I learned right out of college is you have to go look at a site and, and the site talks to you almost. It'll tell you, hey, put a house here or put a building here and stay away from this area. It's so difficult to overcome some natural constraints, although it can be done from an engineering standpoint. I mean, nature is telling you don't come into this area. This particular project, we only had about maybe 35 or 40 acres that was developable without crossing the stream. Um, and then the remaining, you know, 150 acres was on the other side of the streams. The challenges were to protect the stream buffers and the, the corridors, the wildlife corridors along the streams. Well, buffers are important for a number of different features from best management practices standpoint. You want to be able to cleanse the water, stormwater, or any natural runoff that would occur prior to it entering the stream and the vegetation that adjoins the stream does that naturally. Woodlands are important because the root mass holds the, the ground in place and eliminates erosion. We really wanted to focus on stabilizing those stream banks because we knew as soon as we started working on this project that volume of stormwater was a big problem because communities downstream were experiencing flooding conditions even during minor, minor storms. So we wanted to help reduce the volumes or at least control the volumes that were being generated off-site. Buffers really have a lot of environmental benefits, not only for water quality, but also they provide important habitat area for wildlife and they have environmental benefits. Trees and vegetation help clean our air. They also provide shade, which makes it easier to air condition homes. They provide buffers from the winds and also the cold in the winter. And aesthetically, just it's really beautiful to have riparian corridors throughout a development. It's attractive to look at trees and they create separation between the backs of homes so people have more privacy. The old zoning used to have cookie cutter plots and all the nice features would have to go in the backyards and then you couldn't even take care of them. Some people would abuse them, cut trees down, throw stuff in the stream and you couldn't take care of them. And so we went to a cluster ordinance specifically for properties like Cherry Creek. We were fortunate on this project that it was actually a PRD or plans residential development, which gives us a little bit more ability to design the site as far as setbacks. You can move your houses closer together, which gives you the ability then to maintain or even increase buffer distances. This township has uh, a 25 foot buffer distance from stream corridors 
we actually in areas have almost 200 foot of buffer area. When we did the design, we tried to incorporate as many non-structural best management practices as we could. And that meant reducing street widths, reducing front yard setbacks to shorten up on driveways. We tried to limit sidewalks to one side of the street instead of two sides of the street to reduce impervious surfaces. And so once we had covered the non-structural, then we moved into the structural and we tried to uh, infiltrate as much as possible with infiltration basins, constructed wetlands for stormwater quality. And instead of piping stormwater underground, we designed vegetated swales to con convey stormwater. Where we had shallow basins with a, with a berm, we uh, incorporated trails along the back of the berm so that the, the basins almost seemed invisible as though they were a function of the landscape. It was more than just looking at managing our pre to post development on this particular site. We actually wanted to intercept off-site drainage and to our knowledge the township has been very happy with our results here. We did reduce some of our, our flood waters, the 100 year storm, by almost 50 percent. I didn't really understand the opportunity that would become available by making Cherry Creek a conservation community and that came about in a natural way in that once we did all the land planning and engineering to protect the critical resources, the next step became how do we put in place guidelines or regulations that are going to preserve in perpetuity the very things that we saved. And that then led us into the Cherry Creek Conservation Community because we dedicated an easement to the Green Wine Conservancy and put in place an endowment for its care and put in place a open space management plan that went into great detail explaining how the project was meant to be developed and maintained over time. I think what made it successful was that stormwater uh, was considered as a very important aspect of the design very early in the process. And even though there were certain provisions in the ordinance, at times we needed to have a little bit of flexibility and the township was open to new ideas to make the plan work. We can't avoid development. Uh, we can't afford to buy the property and keep it open. So we have to work together to make it the best possible development that we can all be proud of. This project is actually very uh, rewarding for me and, and just from a personal standpoint because I got to do some things that are important to me as far as stormwater and uh, flood control. And what it shows is that you can do a development with a lot of homes and still preserve uh, the natural features of a site and, and do it well. I guess there's a question of whether or not that I'm, I'm doing this type of development for altruistic reasons or not. And the answer is I'm not. First and foremost, uh, it's a business. So normally when I get involved in new projects, I look at it pretty analytically from a standpoint of what are my rights under law? And that becomes the baseline. I then try to do better. And if I find that there are people on the other side of the table who share the goal of doing something better uh, so that there's a win-win scenario, then it's all green lights and I, I will pursue that with more vigor and more gusto than you can imagine. We walked through the, the project a couple of weeks ago with one of the landowners and he said, I love it here. He says that the wildlife is unbelievable and the birds are just so, so spectacular and we just enjoy the setting of being, you know, living by a creek with all these great trees and it really uh, increases the value of our homes and it really makes it a much nicer place to live.